Hi, welcome back to Colour in Your Life. I'm Sophia Stacey. And I'm Natasha Wernick. And we'd like to take you on a journey to see some of the best artists in Australia. I'll be filming. And I'll be your host. So come with us and enjoy this unique opportunity to enter artist studios and see how they do what they do. We all have the ability to be artistic and we are going to show you some fabulous artists to inspire you to pick up that paintbrush and get creative. Hello and welcome back to Colour in Your Life. Today we're in Sale in Victoria and we're with the beautiful Tanya Devet. Welcome to Colour in Your Life. Hi Sophia, how are you? Very good, lovely <laughs> to be here. We're actually at Mansi on Raymond yes. and it's exclusive serviced apartments here mm. <laughs> and they take a lot of pride in their gardens. Around the whole property there's lovely flowers mm. and they, they really take pride in their gardens here. Absolutely. Maintaining things is part of keeping up that nostalgic feeling of what they had envisioned in the beginning. But I believe that this is where your career actually started. Tell Absolutely. Us, tell us a bit more about that. We stayed here a while ago and I saw some agapanthus outside and picked them up and started drawing them. And those drawings actually involved into my own first repeat pattern. Wow, so this is a very special place for you to um, yeah. come back to, to film. And you've actually got the original book where you started here. I do. And the original drawing. <laughs> and this is what launched your career in surface pattern design. Absolutely, Sophia. And what you're going to show us today is how you take it from here and put it into the computer mm -hmm. and then make these beautiful repeat patterns that yeah can be used for different sorts of products. Yeah. I draw my images mm -hmm. with pencil and I erase and play with the lines. Then I go in with a black pen, make sure I have all those outlines perfectly. And then I start taking my watercolor palette and begin to play and discover the colors that inspired me. So for instance, here in the courtyard, we can use some of the colors of the roses. Uh -huh some of the brick colors and I love to play with pink and yes. also recently discovered that brown brings a pink to a level where that vintage feeling comes back. If, you, if you're a very fiery person and you want to bring in some aspect of softness then play with softer shades of those vibrant colors that you actually like. Or if you want to bring tranquility into a room, your blues and greens are excellent for that. Mm -hmm. um, we forget how important colour is on the way we experience our environment. Mm. And wallpaper can really make a difference in that. It's been so lovely to come and see where it all began here at Mansi on Raymond. But we're going to go back to Tanya's studio and see how you put all of these drawings into the computer and make these fabulous designs. So yes. we'll see you back in the studio. Okay, Tanya, here we are back in your fabulous studio. Hi. And <laughs> in front of the computer, and you're going to show us how you take the sketches that you showed us just before, yeah. and then how you develop it into your fabulous magic. All right. So normally, I, while I'm outside, I pick some colors and play around with colors in the sketchbook and try and get a color palette going. I'm going to jot down a few colors that I've got in mind that I picked up there from the um, paving and the walls, some of the flowers, and bring them into the sketchbook so that we can scan it in and start building this little pattern. You know your basics like cadmium and the stuff that normally comes in your watercolor sets. I'm going to use that and then adapt them slightly, mute them down a little bit and try and see how I can play with these colors to just alter them slightly. I don't want them fresh out of the palette. I want them 
manipulate it a little bit and adjust it so that we can have something that's a little bit more unique than straight from the pan. And it doesn't have to be something that I mix up here and spend hours on. I'm literally putting down some colors, seeing what works and what can flow into that vision we created at Manzi. Mm -hmm. And um, we'll work from there because once it's on digital, I can always manipulate it and just fine tune the colors exactly the way I wanted them. But you just want to get a visual and yes, get the idea yes. of those colors. And the feeling, just put the feeling mm. down. I mean, this is all really very random um, and it doesn't matter if things are touching each other. I can always edit them out or move them around. And that's the beauty of bringing technology into your workflow so that you don't only have traditional work but also have that technology and um, new age things coming back into what we are creating now. So it's very much capturing the light, capturing what I see on site. And so many of my designs have, you'll hear morning light or evening this or whatever, because that was the time of day maybe that I captured that thing or um, some other atmosphere I was trying to get onto paper. So lilies at Casablanca, such a beautiful combination of colours. I try and diversify the designs in a way where they'll have multiple applications as well. So it depends on the scale and your colour scheme. So you might intermix different ones with each other. So for one, you might have a tablecloth with this bright, big, bold flowers. And then for the napkins, you might choose something like one of those smaller um, printed versions, maybe in a green, to complement your tablecloth or to complement your decor. It all depends on what you'd like to create because you can pick and choose and make it totally unique and your own. And to think our old masters used um, block carvings and the layer for layer on meters of um, wallpaper fabric or wallpaper um, product and they did all of this by hand they didn't even have the advantages we have now with technology once you've got your colors that you'd like to use where do you go from here or? well I don't color the drawings right now um, if I if there's something I want to revisit I'll take one of my other sketchbooks and I'll redraw it there as a single standing item and then color that in and just have it on its own but that's more for my own relaxing part of the story. But for the Adobe Illustrator, I literally draw it from the sketchbook, scan it into the computer, and from there on vectorize and add all those elements, colors, and sort of manipulate it to where it can be a repeat pattern. So are we going to scan that in? Wow, yes, Ooh. right now. <laughs> all right, let's, get, let's give that a go. All right. So we've got it on the screen and we are going to color pick first. So the way I like to do that is just draw out a little square mm -hmm. and make sure I repeat it down and just make some more. Voila! And then <laughs> I'll tell you technology is amazing. Once you get to know it and be its friend, it can do miracles for you. <laughs> must have taken a long time to learn this. It's terrible how many hours I actually spent trying to figure out until I met my mentor. So I learned a lot of things from Bonnie Christine and surface pattern design is one of the ultimate things that speaks to my heart and I'm so happy that I learned that from her. Now what I'm doing here is just selecting some colors um, I'm using my image initially as a photo so that I can color pick and everybody has their own way of doing this. Now normally that shows to me that it's almost all the same tone, you know. Yes. 
So what I'll do is I'll just grab that square. I love that pink. I'm going to keep that. Gorgeous. That one is nice as well, but I can double click on that and just change it a little bit. I'm liking that, but I want to mute it a little bit. So I'll just go there and that one I want to bump up and get it green, dark and beautiful because I want that extra contrast. So for me, that is the perfect color combination and I'll just grab all of them and open that little color group thingy and press OK and just like that, <laughs> our colors are neatly organized here and ready to use. So that means I can delete those and start vectorizing this image. That's fascinating. I've never seen that process done no. before. And I'm really speeding through it right now. So it's very um, stimulating and also relaxing. And you're in your studio alone doing all this work and you could just see everything come together. You do teach workshops, don't you? I do. I do. I teach people how to use their sketchbooks properly to build on your style and build on your own art career. You can always learn from other people, but you need to put your own stamp on things. And a sketchbook is the perfect segue for that because you can redo and practice and keep on practicing every single day until you get better at what you want. And that's difficult to figure out in the beginning. So you need some place where you can actually continue learning and a sketchbook is the perfect place. So after I learned how to do surface pattern designs, my first thought was what if this design could go on a sketchbook? And then my mind started rolling, well what do I what do I want in a sketchbook? And I realized that it's a very lonely place sometimes. And if you can have sort of I mean even if you're a student, you don't always have your teacher there. So what if somebody can open the book and read one of the quotes and just be there with the book and your supplies and the quote? So you have some blank pages for people to Plenty of do blank. whatever they like, but then you've got some guidance in the quotes and some examples that people can follow too if they um, like. Yeah. So this one says, make time for your creative practice. The proof of your progress develops over time. And that's what it's about. When we were chatting this morning, you said uh, you're a humanitarian. Absolutely, absolutely. I care a lot about people and the way they feel and fit into the world, you can almost say. Okay, so let's uh, grab our little special tool there. And we'll separate that one out. And Look at that. Yeah, magic, right? Fascinating. So for now, I can always rescan my sketchbook, but I'm going to delete these ones. Okay. Because we don't need them right now. Now, since I already have my colors selected there. Voila, <laughs> bing. Just like that, it's colored and recolored. And you can actually move it, move spin it, it, spin it and, and also duplicate uh -huh. and I'll duplicate that a few times. Fabulous and this is where the technology and the creative process Absolutely, come because, together. Yeah because you've got your elements now and you've colored them, you can manipulate them even more. I can grab that as a group and I can um, multiply them and then I can turn them around and through that process start building my repeat pattern. So there's a little bit more to the process but that's how far I'm going to take it today and that becomes a repeat pattern and that is what we put on our fabrics and our designs and our elements and it can be used on multiple surfaces. And you've got another beautiful collection called This is Maggie. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? Yes, This is Maggie isn't necessarily dedicated to my grand but it's dedicated to her garden and the work she loved to do in that. 
I've taken memories and things we used to share like clipping the hedges. Now this pattern here was from those remnants of the clippings that fell on the ground and I remember us picking that up. And this one is like all the little pollen dust particles in the air after we've been scuffling in the garden. <laughs> it's almost more important this way than actually having a look at our photos because the photos don't show half as much emotion as what I could have captured in these designs. So the surface pattern designs are licensable which means a company can approach me and they can say well we want this and that and I will negotiate of course and in the meantime I'll continue creating collections because that warms my heart and you don't have to fill your whole room with layers and layers of patterns you can mix and match and create a collection of your own and those can be found on Spoonflower where they have not only my fabric but also have a tablecloth or a pillow or something you can buy to decorate your home with. So I don't sell these as finished products but they are out there and available. And so if you could just repeat where they could find those again? Well, Spoonflower is where I sell my some of my designs for the fabric like this and also um, oh gosh that's gorgeous look yeah. at that it'd make really good um, clothing as well absolutely and there's different fabrics you can choose from there's soft silky velvets and there's cotton and for those of us who are very organic orientated there are plenty of organic fabrics as well the possibilities are really endless in how we can apply our surface patterns and therein lies the magic as you'll never run out of ideas. Now uh, from here wh where do we go? Well I can bring in a bounding box and color that in its own color. So let me just get some room here. There we go and from that you will draw in your your repeat patterns and bring them well these colors kind of clash can you see that so i'll select a cooler color there ah, or maybe turn that. these into darker shades um, like that Beautiful. and um, the thing with the repeat pattern it needs to repeat upwards and sideways now I'm not going to share that whole process with you because it is a little bit lengthy and so on but you then take this repeat block and we'll get to apply it onto a surface. You've got another beautiful collection called the Welcome Home Collection. So the Welcome Home Edition was one of the very very first things I created while on the immersion course and it started because of a Fabrice egg in my grandmother's showcase. I wanted to capture those trailing roses around that golden egg and also capture our family gathering memories over Easter weekends. And I created a set for my mom, myself, my gran and my daughter, which meant we were four generations in the family that were showcased, literally, in these patterns. Okay, so what have we got on the screen there now? So I've created the pattern from our original drawings, but I wanted to just show you how that original drawing mm -hmm. um, that we did this morning in the we, courtyard. Yes, yeah, so we did it then and I brought it into the computer. I edited it a little bit, added some color, those colors we picked from um, our drawing. Then I turned it into a repeat pattern and that repeat pattern is obviously recolored but we can play a little magic trick and use our color palette that we've established there already mm -hmm. and bring it in oh wow look at that and literally chop and change any way we like oh 
I love those colors. Yes, and reimagine this whole magical thing. And another wonderful thing you do is called sketchbook retreats. And you've got a, we've got a little video here to kind of help understand what that's all about. And you love to help people find that creativity. And people can go to your website to find out. And uh, your website address is? AnsoDesigns.com. There's also the Sketchbook Lovers Membership that you can find on your website. But you want to tell us a little bit more about that? Yes, the Sketchbook Lovers Membership actually came about because my background as a self-taught artist. And I discovered that my sketchbooks actually brought me closer to discovering what I wanted to accomplish as an artist. So I started setting out monthly topics, like November I did Plato's Cave and Shadows, and how shadows play out. But every month has its own topic, and I have stuff like creativity and bliss, projects, creative lifestyles. You really put so much effort into helping others be creative. I'd love to thank you for having us in your studio today and showing surface pattern design, which yes. I, we've never had on the show before. So thank you so much for giving us a brief introduction to it. Well, Sophie and Natasha, it was Sophia and Natasha. It was amazing having you guys with me and sharing my studio space and my beginnings and sketchbooks and I really appreciate you guys coming all the way to sale to join our art community and see what we get up to on this side of the world, <laughs> you know, <laughs> we're in Gippsland in the middle of everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> and we've travelled all the way especially for you. Thank you. Well, I hope uh, the viewers out there and people around the world have been educated in the world of surface pattern design. Thank you once again, Tanya. Thank you. <laughs>